let's take a look at a catapult. And with a catapult, it's going to require us to create some constraints. So I'm actually going to just tear this off. Once again, I'm in the FX menu set under Fields and Solvers. And I'll just go ahead and tear that off and bring that off to the side. Okay. Now, um, I can see that I have my catapult here, and then I have the goal of what the catapult's going to hit over here. And this is the stopper of the catapult. So you can see that this is the arm, this is the stopper. I've got the ball that I'm going to launch. And right now I feel like everything is just, um, you know, kind of sitting at its starting point. This is just geometry. Um, one thing that I want to point out is that on this, you can see that I have nothing touching. Okay, just kind of being very careful about that. Even the balls aren't touching the geometry there. So if I start with this, um, I want this to have a hinge constraint down here and then I want it to get pulled up and then it stops on this which will launch the ball. So to do that, um, in my fields and solvers, I'm going to go down to create hinge constraint. And when I do that, I'm just going to kind of scale it bigger so I can see it. And if I press 4, okay, I can see that it's facing this way. So I'm going to rotate it like this, 90 degrees. That's the hinge. And I'm going to go ahead and put that right at the center of this circle. I pressed 4 to get wireframe. Okay, and I just scaled it out far enough that I could see it kind of sticking out the ends. The size of it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of for your sake. So I could just kind of scale it wider like that. There we go. Okay, great. Now let's see what that did. Uh, I can see that when I click on this, it made this a rigid body, okay? Like we already talked about. And by the way, I want to point out something. If I wanted to see um, what had a rigid body and what didn't, if I go over here, notice that there's no indication that this arm has a rigid body and, and this stopper does not, unless I click on it and look over here in the channel box. But what I could do is I could go to display and then if I go to shapes, now there's an extra plus sign next to each one of these. And if I open it up, aha, I can see that the arm has a rigid body where the stopper does not right now. And I can click on the rigid body and I can access these controls. Okay, so just kind of a, a cool extra tidbit of information there. Now I can grab the ball and I can give it gravity. So if I select the ball while clicking on gravity, it's automatically going to attach gravity to that ball. Now, if I rewind and hit play, okay, that's what happens. I can see that that's not a very effective catapult right now, right? But I can see that the hinge is actually working, okay? If I want that to get pulled up, I'm going to introduce another constraint. I'm going to introduce a spring constraint. When I do that, okay, it looks like nothing happened, but if I go to my move, I can pull this up. And this is kind of where the spring force is pulling it. Okay, and I wanted to pull it like towards the stopper. Now it doesn't even have to physically connect to anything and it's not going to connect to anything, but I'm just gonna kind of pull it up in that direction and let's see what happens here. Okay, there we go. I can see that it's working in conjunction. I have the spring constraint and the hinge constraint kind of working together but not quite what we want yet. Um, I could take the stopper, and if I want that to actually physically stop this, I'm gonna have to create this a passive rigid body. Now let's take a look. So if I rewind and hit play, pulls it up, and it stops it. Hey, there we go, awesome. Okay. Once again, not a very effective catapult, I could select this spring constraint and I could go over here under the inputs and I could give, uh, let's see here, actually up here, I can see that the spring stiffness, maybe I increase that to like, let's say 50. Ah, there we go. Nice. Okay. Hey, looking pretty good. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to probably adjust that to make sure that it hits our target but it looks like it's pretty close, okay? 
Maybe I'll put that to 25. Hey, that looks like it'll hit our target. Now notice that it's not, our target is not responding because I don't have any dynamics set to that. So for this side, it's gonna be pretty easy. The ground, I want to be a passive rigid body and everything else I want uh, there to be gravity associated with this. So I want all of this to be an active rigid body, okay? So now just by doing that, let's see what happens. I always rewind and then hit play. Okay, cool. Now it might not do what you expected because we'd probably think that that stuff would fall, right? But it's not falling because there's no gravity, okay? I think what most people that are new at Dynamics would do is select all this stuff and add another gravity. But remember, we already have a gravity in the scene. I can see right here, here's gravity field. So I want to attach this existing gravity to what I have here. So let me see here. Um, okay, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of this stuff here, and then I'm gonna go control click on gravity, and then I'm gonna say assign to selected. Now all of that stuff has this same gravity. Okay, let's see what that did. Hey, great, awesome. Okay, now it doesn't quite play the whole simulation. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna give myself like, let's say 500 frames, rewind to the beginning and then press play. And now I can see that, oh, if my goal was to knock everything over, it looks like I still have a few there. Uh, so I would have to kind of play with that. Um, and remember, if I wanted to adjust the mass of the red ball, I could click on the red ball and adjust its mass. If I wanted to adjust the mass of these, I could do that as well. I could make some balls bouncier than others. Okay, I could create the different weight of these. But I think that you've got a lot of cool stuff that you can kind of get started with. And you could make you know, the graphics of it as elaborate as you want, but I feel like we have the concept down of dynamics using kind of this idea of rigid body and constraints together to make a really kind of powerful simulation that would have been a lot more difficult otherwise. Let me just try increasing this spring to 30. And you can see that it hits it at a different area Okay, kind of cool there. All right, so there we have it, the idea of adding uh, constraints. And you can see that there's a, a few other constraints that you can kind of play with, but I, but I feel like, once again, covering active and passive rigid body constraints and gravity and how those all work together.